drinking, bro. Put down the water and grab a fucking drink. Oh, oh man, boy, this is gonna be intimate, bro. Uh, isn't it? I'm excited, man. Yeah. I feel like we always go high to the right. We got, we just, it's just the two of it us. It is just the two of us. It yeah. is, uh, it is a, it is, it is a late eve. We're in a bedroom. Yeah, we we are, but it, like we're not like on a bed. No, we're not. We're not <laughs> on a bed yet. Uh, it, it is, it is Matt Best and Ross Patterson doing a little one on one. We've done some one on ones in the past with everybody. People love them. Uh, I believe the last time you and I did a one-on-one was North Carolina at the studio, and that was fun. We went to North Carolina. I'm it was excited. a great show. It was a, it was a great show. This is gonna be a great show. Oh, uh, let's hope. You know, I, I look. I think so because we're, we're. I'm just gonna talk to Ross. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're gonna talk to Ross Patterson all night, yeah, which, which is always a gift in itself. It is, man. Uh, to the world, smart and but, talented. But 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 with this, we're we're actually gonna dive into relationships tonight. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think we'll get into some personal stuff and 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 talk about stuff. So hopefully, because like- people here's the thing: people at home love you, uh, and they're they're always saying the same thing of like, man, I I, w- I wish I knew more shit about Matt's personal life, and and I'm gonna go for it. Exactly, I mean, I, you're 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 I guarded got- to a certain degree, um, because look, there's a lot of people after you. A lot of people want things from you. You've been burned a couple times in the past. And uh, hopefully we can we can talk about that tonight. Absolutely. Uh, anybody who else who's out there listening, who's going through something like that, hopefully uh, when, once we talk to Matt, it's somebody you can relate to. Well, yeah, I think that's the whole reason I was like, dude, let's let's do this whole thing and talking about personal endeavors and my relationship stuff because you know I, I I'm just in a process of learning as I go through life, and hopefully the things that I've been through can can help someone else. And if that's the case, awesome. And almost like talking about your own issues and, and problems, not problems necessarily, but. Uh, experiences in life uh it help helps you grow as a person so i mean i'm fucking down yeah and who, who else to better down. do that with one i'm of like your best down friends. like system of the down you know <laughs> well you know i mean ross and i and, and ross he he's writing a book that we're doing together and like so him and i've got the nitty gritty we like to drink beers and whiskey together yes uh and in denver colorado so whatever else happens in this glorious yeah day, you know? yeah this is our this is our last <laughs> evening year it is uh it is. and we, we thought we'd share it together Fuck i'm yeah. not i'm not gonna say what we're drinking um, I do have bullet bullet bourbon in there, which is because we don't have Colorado doesn't have lead singers yet, and there's a can of something else. I don't know what that there, is. there is there is there is, <laughs> there is a can of something else uh, from a from a place called Pure. Uh, I'll leave people uh, their their imagination in Google up to figure out whatever that is. Right. Um, but right. other than that, let, let's dive in. We let's got some sponsors, some sponsors, man. Some Make it possible. Sponsors. <laughs> uh, first up and off the top of the bat, we, we already got know Haven who it Lock. Is. It's Haven Lock. Yeah, we know who it is. We're doing a, a show on relationships. Um, you could put a Haven Lock on your heart. You know, you, you you could, but then you're not vulnerable and you won't live your life. So yeah, but uh, but, but put uh, it up, put it on your door so you can save that one you love. Exactly, you know? exactly. But like Haven Lock, uh, if you did put it on your heart, uh, if it get, it gets kicked in three times, not gonna matter. Not gonna matter. <laughs> right. Haven Lock takes right. 50, fifty kicks. And no one kicks your heart 50 door. times. Uh, no. You, you can find that, you know? No, no. Uh, look, ha- Haven Lock is the greatest fucking lock of the 21st century. Uh, they actually raised $100,000 on Kickstarter. Uh, they became, fuck, world-renowned. Uh, every, everybody find out who they are. They're, they're combat-owned. And, uh, you know, if you want to keep your family safe, your, 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 your pets, everything you got safe, Go to their website, havenlock.com. Put a Haven mech on your door. Uh, it, that fucking thing's impossible to get through. I got one on my door. It's amazing. Uh, I actually asked them to ship one out because I'm like ultra conservative because you know, I like to have a few drinks for bed, but I have like, I map out everything in my, my house where I'm like, okay, I can shoot through this drywall. And if I put it, I, I, could, I even sometimes mark a Sharpie, a tiny little dot. Yeah. So I know if I shoot through this part really? of my house. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I'm weird with shit, man. I like that, well, though. I'm, I'm, I like that. A little higher profile. And, you know, ISIS hates fucking veterans. So I'm like, come at me, bro. Um, they're going to have a tough one on that one because I'll map out. I can shoot through this and I'll hit my fucking front door. Obviously, I'm not just going to fucking shoot when someone knocks sure. on my door but when i get my door kicked in nine different times and i see a guy with an ak well guess what i'm gonna hard point in my bedroom and you're gonna get shot from the other room you almost drew on the uh the guy with the tad uh, the 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 thai food today I, I, <laughs> he knocked aggressively <laughs> he knocked aggressively he knocked i was aggressively yeah. on uh we're, we're staying at an airbnb in uh in denver at a house uh they, they have no idea what the fuck went on in this house 
But uh, a th- the guy with the Thai food today aggressively knocked on the door. He hit it hard. Matt drew and was like, "Yo, motherfucker!" And he was just like, "I Thai food, Thai food." Well, I didn't let him know I had my pistol. I hit it behind the door. No, but you were yeah. good about it. You were good. We all saw it. Uh, but it was nice. <laughs> but uh, which brings us to Tartarus Ordinance. I know. I know. But, but, we didn't but, even mean but, that segue. But but but, oh, but with, with Tartarus Ordinance, uh, here, here's the thing: if you go to Havenlock.com, you get a lock. Uh, drinking bros. Uh, you type in the promo code drinking bros on havenlock.com. You get it for fucking ninety nine dollars. Let's say they get through that ninety nine dollar lock. You better be stocked up to the fucking hilt with tartarusordinance.com. T a r t a r u s o r d n a n c e dot com for all your home defense ammunition needs. If how you want to pew pew on the range, how you spelled that that quick was impressive. Thank you yes. so much. I talked about the last episode. Yeah, they, they do uh, some some wholesale stuff too, which is awesome because you can square yourself away for everybody at the range and get your get your quick draws on. Because I do a lot of stuff where it's like uh, you know accuracy drills, which you want the higher end ammo, which they sell, and then yep. you do other drills, which is just like I'm throwing around at three meters. I'm, yeah. No. If it hits the silhouette, I'm good. Yeah, you're <laughs> you know, good. You're good. I, I'm trying not to die. I'm trying to shoot the asshole that's trying to rob me. Yeah, and, and look, I, I heard they're, they've switched to a subscription. You can get a subscription yeah. for it. Yeah. Uh, they've got a promo code, Drinking Bros. They, they sell firearms, uh, and they also sell the tactical classes. So if, you, if you're running a class somewhere, uh, you need 10,000, 20,000 rounds. If you type in that promo code, Drinking Bros., you're still getting ten percent off of everything, which is or amazing. if you're like me and you buy ten thousand rounds as a as an individual. I mean, oh yeah, whatever. yeah. I mean, you need to. You need to look. Somebody comes through your door. You're using all ten thousand, right? <laughs> I would hope not, or I'm a really fucking bad shit. But or you just want to make sure that job is finished. Oh shit, yeah. You know, I'm the guy that plans for the zombie horde. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm range 16, 17, 18 is what I'm planning for with my ammo Boom. supply. <laughs> Boom! Boom! Yeah, welcome, welcome to the Terra Zone, yep. playboy. Uh, next up, whoa, 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 uh, uh, you know. I can't, I can't even go into how much of a fan I am of Strike Force Energy. I, I wanted to, wow, even, even before you got into it. You God, know? it's it's weird, isn't it? It's good shit. It's great shit. That, I like, like the show because we we, we, we have the sponsors it. that we I, love. We actually love. Yeah, it's yeah. it's hard. It would be hard to be like this shit sucks and let's promote it. But I know. I, I, I legit love Strike Force. I know Tim Morris at Freedom Festival. Uh, shit, a while back. What I don't even know a week or so now. Yeah. Um, he was drinking uh, Lead Slingers and Strike Force, and he was like, "This is fucking awesome." Get the it fuck was just, out of here. just so amped. Combo? Yeah, yeah. I try tasted it, and I was like that surprisingly it's really fucking dude, good strike force goes with everything i do so we look at home uh it's no bullshit we have a subscription it comes to our house every month you can get a subscription off their site i'm i'm addicted to it it's it's a pre-workout for me i don't know about you um it's a pre-workout i also write to it like it's just better than i, I like i fucking hate pickup, cans yeah. kick the can uh, I, I just hate buying cans of fucking energy drinks. Um, well, energy drinks are not my thing. I, I just don't like them. The carbonation, I, I hate carbonation. Like, I don't, I don't do not drink sodas. Mm-hmm. So I do, like, like, basic caffeine. I do powdered caffeine in the morning for my workout. And right. then once I eat at the ra- office, do my writing, I usually take Strike Force before my MMA workout. So, yeah. Which yeah. is nice. It's like a, a good pick-me-up after my meals. Yeah, and you, uh, I, I've seen you. You post a lot of uh, your videos of, of your workouts. What's your Instagram for the people at home? Uh, my personal one is just Matt, Matt underscore best underscore official. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I saw some, some, uh, you, you posted some vids of you, uh, uh, sparring a little bit. Who are you sparring with out there? I have fun, man. I have fun guys out there. Uh, Josh Tyler, who's, uh, helps out black rifle coffee. Uh, Jeremy Horn, who's a legend in the UFC. Yeah. And and some other guys from the UFC, and you know I'm I'm in no means like a professional. I'm not even close to a professional fighter. Not even. But you're, you're getting real good, by the way. I like to spar. I always laugh at the fucking dudes on Instagram. It's like, where's your lateral movement? I'm like, we're doing boxing drills. We're yeah. we're doing in the pocket. So it's like, hey, if anybody wants to put a comment on Instagram, uh, come come spar with me, and we'll see if if you can beat exactly. my ass. Could, have could fun. The, right? you, you can wreck about ninety nine point nine percent of the people out there. Maybe general people, but yeah, I'm not a pushover. You're always gonna have your fucking keyboard warrior yeah, I who types about in it. and was like. Man, fuck you, pussy. I'm comfortable in my own skin, you know. I, I do it just because I like to be able to fight, and I, I love, you know, guys like Josh Tyre. That guy's like 155 pounds he fights at. And like, right. we spar, things are fun. He lets me do my thing, but when he turns it on, like, he clowns me. So you're like, and I'm a 220 pound fucking, like, man, man, right? Yeah, and I'm like, like, son of a bitch. You're, this Irish you're, you're a piece fuck. of granite. Like, when we hug, it's, <laughs> it's like a mountain hugging another mountain. I appreciate it that. It is. But my ass can still get beat by 155 pound man, which I don't like. So I'm trying to get better. Weird, right? <laughs> right, weird, right. weird. Yeah. So, anyways, strikeforceenergy.com. 
twenty uh, percent off if you type in the promo code Drinking Bros. They've also got a seven fifty milliliter bottle that it just squirts right into your drink. So cool. um, fucking amazing. And they ship anywhere in the entire world, which is fucking awesome. Um, so if you're deployed somewhere, it's like it's like love. There, yeah. they, they, there's no restrictions. There's no boundaries. You know, love has no boundaries. What an, North ap- Korea. what an appropriate statement for this episode. I know. Man. I know. What's uh, love got, got to do? do got, got to do with it. it. What's love with a motherfucking cigar? Uh, that leads us into Warfighter, Warfighter tobacco. tobacco. We don't even read shit and we're reading ourselves like goddamn, what do they call the the palm readers? You know? I know. I, love it. I feel I feel like like Cleo, RIP. I mean, she's died, but I feel like psychic Cleo, Cleo the, the psychic. The only cigar I've smoked in the last shit, like a year and a half, is Warfighter. It's Warfighter, yeah. Because I fucking hate smoking. Like, I just, I do not like smoking in general the act of well, it I, he, and i'm not talking shit but like cigar smoking i can kind of get a part of it and i'm not talking shit but their shit's good and like and those guys are dope and i think about smoking cigars it's like that camaraderie and the brotherhood yeah. where it's like man i'm gonna smoke a cigar and chill with the boys because it's a good hang you know you're looking at you were smoking cigars about four, a 45 minute burn on that and yeah. uh uh with, with that with, with warfighter tobacco uh those guys are just cool as fuck they're down and uh, it, look, if you're going to have a cigar, you're getting a fucking Warfighter tobacco cigar. They got a special uh, Drinking Bros cigar. They do. Uh, on their sites. If you type in the promo code Drinking Bros, you get 10% off of every cigar in the store. Uh, they're 100% combat veteran owned. Badass. And uh, yeah, look. Uh, they uh, showed uh, up in their, their nice uh, the SUV with the Warfighter tobacco I pulled into for Freedom Fest. And yeah. I'm like, Holy shit. They have the, the car modded out. I'm like, that. Fuck yeah, I was excited. Scott Jansen and the boy, they're fucking dope, dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like them a lot. And, it, and it's one of those things where, you know, back to your earlier point about smoking cigars, like, I, I think there's so many shitty cigars out there that you smoke those initially as you start off and you grow up. But then as you get older, you're like, ah, oh, man, those tasted like shit. Maybe I don't like smoking cigars. Right. Then you have a Warfighter tobacco cigar and you're like, oh, fuck, these are great. Oh, all right. I get the camaraderie and I get right. what smoking cigars is really all about. Exactly. Yeah. So, so good look. Go to warfightertobacco.com. They're, they're the finest cigars. Uh, they're hand rolled in uh, the Dominican Republic with, with Cubano seeds. Uh, they're amazing. We love, we love those guys. Last but not least, we got a, we got a night she cries while he rides his steed. <laughs> the first ever romance novel for dude. The funniest book ever written. I get it. I, uh, I listened to it on audio. So. Yeah. And, and, and look, tonight's episode is about relationships. And, and, and I'll be real. If you're, if you're thinking about having a serious relationship, you, reading that book is not it. Um, it's, it's about a guy who fucks everybody on the planet, uh, even travels to China for six years to fuck prostitutes in the 1800s. So, uh, yeah, yeah. All the way up. All the way up. Uh, so, so get a night she cries while he rides a seat. It's at uh, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble. It's in every store across the USA, even Walmart.com. Now and they audible. I do it myself with a team of actors. Uh, God bless Simon and Schuster for letting me do that. It was fucking rad. I'm proud of you guys. Yeah, it was one, fucking one of the rad. greatest books ever. Uh, tonight's tonight is a special show, kids. Uh, we got Matt Best. It's a one on one, and we're we're actually talking about relationships. Yeah, I'm, I'll throw out a shout out to Lead Slinger's whiskey, which uh, I, I'm not drinking right now because we don't have it in Colorado, because yeah. we may or may not have drank those bottles over the last. We week. did. We 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 drank <laughs> a whole happen. pallet. But uh, it's a it's a company that I own with a, a few other business partners, and it's probably the best bourbon ever. But yes, I'm excited, man. I'm down to be a little vulnerable, man, and and uh, have a one on one and just get down, dude. You know? Yeah. Let's live some life, bro. Let, let, let's live some life. So so where where is where is Matt best at relationship wise right now? Uh wow. Just just straight We're out the diving gate. Diving in. We're uh, diving in. Yeah, right now. So I, I'm essentially single. I mean, um, yeah. I wouldn't say it's, I'm. Moved on from the the public relationship that most people know that I was in. Yes, I'll put that on because uh, you, you had a very public relationship on Instagram, yes. uh, Facebook, Facebook, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and all that stuff. And it's hard because you're in the public eye. So if there's a yeah. split, you know, a lot of people are going to comment on it immediately because yeah. it's you. Yeah, I think that's like what I've learned in um, before my current relationship, the one before, and 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 th- their characters have no comparison um the person that that i'm getting out of a relationship with now ha- has character and she's she's a good person it's just it didn't work you know uh but the reality of it is it's like being in a public relationship it's very 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 challenging because everybody wants to be associated in that breakup they want to pick sides they want to uh, heighten uh aggression they want to do all these things whereas like i'm, I'm kind of the guy where I, I sit back and i'm like 
I, I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna do me. Like I don't want I want to high five on the way out like it didn't work kind of thing. You know, right? But th- you have the white knights and other people that come in, and they're always going to attack your character just because someone says you know you broke up with me and it's like ah, well it just didn't work can we leave it at that so yeah and on the point of figure i'm just talking about like relationships across the Ab- board, absolutely you know? and it's uh you know, you know for you in particular it's more difficult uh because everything is so public about your life um and you know uh, people will come to defend you you find out who your real friends are and, and that type of shit like oh a lot of gossip behind the scenes. Right. Uh, shit that you just, you're like, God damn it. Can we just move on from this? Like, yeah. It was a simple breakup. Because you, t- to your credit, you've never said a bad word, word about this girl. Um, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was a great relationship while it lasted. And, but you moved on. Yeah, I mean, I think when you spend two and a half years and, you know, two years living with that person, undeniably, can you, you cannot leave that environment without, like, some emotions. You can't just walk away from that, right? Um, yep. So like on both sides, and it'd be an unrealistic approach to be like, let's cut ties. You you can't have furthered emotions and and believe that things. You people lie to themselves and think that they can carry on the situation. But yeah, I think I I, I guess what when we're talking about relationships and and this whole thing that brought up the podcast of why we should talk about this tonight is like I don't really guess I don't understand why people get so violent with stuff, man. Like. I'm just such like a chill fucking dude. Like I obviously have my violent side of me, but I'm like, I just like, we should just like laugh and come as much as we can in yeah. life. Yeah. I just want to laugh and come. That's all I want to do. <laughs> and the second you're not making me come or the second you're not making me laugh, like let's, gotta act, go. we got to go. Gotta and it's go. probably not even, probably better for you too, because I'm probably not making you laugh and come. So yeah. like, let's I mean, move on. The, the relationships poisonous are toxic. Exactly. Um, but with that, like in, 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 I don't know if people have dealt with this in their life, but like entitlements and all these other things. And I've done such a self-evaluation throughout, man, the last like five, five years have been like three big relationships and two of them have been very public. And it, you, you how, st- how long, by the way, how long were those relationships? All, all, all three of those, because they were, they were fairly substantial. Yeah. So the first one was a girl that I was, I was absolutely obsessed with. Uh, I actually got broken up with and I, th- really? Yeah, no, it wasn't like... No, a, but people would be shocked about that. Like, Matt Basket got broken up with? Like, I mean, I'm just Matt, so yeah. I know. Yeah, it wasn't a breakup. It was like her trying to pursue her own thing. She kind of like was super liberal going towards that side of the house, and that's fine. Like, like personality-wise, we didn't necessarily connect, but what her her like character is what I was enjoyable. She's very independent, things like that that I associated myself. Like, that's those are traits of someone that I could actually have a long-term relationship with. So when like, sure she was like, I'm kind of out of this. I had a hard time with it, but like two weeks after we'd broken up, you know, I was running on the beach listening to music and I was like, yo, I, I can create my future. Cheers. You don't want me. I don't want you. And I like, I forgot about it from there. I mean, a rough two weeks, but I was over it. Right. Um, you know, my next one, I'm pretty sure anybody that knows my past <laughs> on YouTube or anything, it was super public and super violent on her end where it was like, how can I slander Matt's character? That got is, crazy. Oh, dude, it was insane, dude. I mean, months and months of blackmail. Oh, God damn, we, we should. Do you, do you feel like going into the, what what that blackmail was? Yeah, we. I mean, because I, I, within I, reason. And the reason why I, I, reason. I say this is obviously we're best friends, but like two sure. audience members, they go through the same shit. So when they have breakups with people, yeah. it's like, oh, I've got this on you, or I've got that on you. Right. Don't do this, or don't do that. Right. Like. Uh, it's that it's that whole character trait in, in people where when when they they don't they can't be a part of the scenario that they kind of you know fucked up they they attack and and it's 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 a weird aggression that I don't understand like like conversely like when I got broken up I was like man that sucks like I really wanted I thought I wanted to be with this person like today I would we would have never worked but like right. I wouldn't ever attack her and her character and text her mother and be like fuck you fuck her she's a fucking whore like that that I'm just not I don't understand that no, whole that ideology right yeah. yeah and a lot of people sh- aren't but when when that happened publicly with the person that I was with when I first started my YouTube channel yeah man I got a Oh god! Like blackmailed Wazoo, my family, her family. You're kidding. Veterans in the space. It was yeah. It was it was nuclear to the point where I had uh, shit six six meetings with lawyers about how does this impact my business? And, really? Yeah, and you, you get kind of insecure in certain things where when people attack you, you kind of want to you, you want to you want to push back because you're yeah, like you, you I'm not up, that yeah, fucking exactly, person. Exactly. And you start to learn like okay, what if I was that person? Do you care about that? And then it almost takes the power away from them. And that's the approach I started learning with that whole thing where I was like, 
okay, you want to make these accusations about who I am? And I was like, okay, sure, I am that person, but all right. And then, then, well, 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 fuck you. And you're like, well, then you have nothing to ground yourself off of. You you want to degrade my character to benefit your own vanity. And it's kind of like, it's such a narcissistic approach to life. And like, you know, you can't find happiness in in someone else. You have to individually be happy, happy, and then supplement your happiness with, with your relationship and your friends, you know? I, no, it's, it's 100% true. And like, uh, I guess part, part of the reason, I, like, I'm curious on this, this, this new perspective, uh, this newfound perspective, you, you just turned 30 a couple weeks ago. Um, do you think with age and time, you're able to look back on these relationships and be like, oh man, I, it was stupid because I was young, maybe so-and-so did this because I, they, they were younger. Uh, would they do this today? Uh, what, what, what's your whole perspective on that? Absolutely. I mean, I've fucked up a lot of things in relationships and, and I want to definitely put out there like the relationship that I'm getting out of right now. Like there, there is not an issue, at least in my mind with character. I, I have no issues that like not a bad person at all. I, I, I'm not a bad person, but like there's absolutely personality conflicts that are there. Right. And, and you know, I, I've made my horrible decisions in that relationship and I, and vice versa. And there's certain things that you grow. So like, how I define myself as a 30 year old, like I finally through that relationship was like, man, these are like kind of foundation, the the things that I need. Everything else is kind of like, I don't even know. It's it's just kind of like, whatever, you know, like there's things like you want respect, you want yada, 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 whatever you need in a relationship. You have to define those roles because when you're younger, you're like, I got to have the hottest bitch. Yeah. I got to have this. Like she's got to be fucking smoking. My friends got to think I'm, I'm awesome. Exactly. I got to look amazing. Like, yeah. Well, and you, and you end up, and I've done it my whole entire life. You try to fix like internal issues in the relationship with materialistic approaches. So it's like, I love yous and tattoos. Don't fix a trust issue. Right. Right. It's a temporary fix where it's like, man, I went through this action to say that I love you, but it's a temporary action. It's not addressing the absolute problem. And, and there's sometimes like you can't fix that problem. And it's super hard to walk away. We're like, I wish that, problem didn't exist but if it does we've we've attempted to fix it then you got to walk away and and i think some people are always like man well you're you you know you're you're married or what this is whatever it is you're like well if why the fuck am i going to be unhappy every day and why the fuck am i going to make someone else unhappy like exactly here do this do that let's walk away high five and fucking hugging the way out and i hope you meet someone that makes you laugh and come yeah <laughs> i'm gonna keep going back to the laugh and come exactly but i uh, but i will say this like i don't think uh, men in general uh myself in- included uh you can't really settle down and find a proper relationship until after 30 uh i think we i think we as men and this is gonna be a a hard comment to say but i think it's true i don't think we develop as fast as women do emotionally so in our 30s is where you kind of find your groove and settle into it and then figure out what you really want out of life and out of a partner. Um, and whereas shit in your, your 20s, to, you know, teens is obviously different. Teens and 20s is, is completely different where you're like, again, like you said, man, I've got to well, have the hottest girl. Right. I've got to <laughs> fucking impress everybody. I got to do this shit. And then you're like, all right, cool. Maybe the hottest girl is fucking boring as shit. Right. Uh, you know, well, there's associations with personalities, right? So I think that like people like us are super hyper alpha male, right? Yes. Which is yes. why we've matured yeah. <laughs> way later in life because it's like at 24, I'm like, I'll fucking fight anybody. Like, fuck yeah, you all cheat Which on my girlfriend. That's still in there. Well, it's yeah. still in there, but yeah. you learn to kind of like harness it, to harness yeah, it, and, exactly. and use that power in something new in business and and to actually be a present partner in a relationship you Correct. want to be in. Where I mean, I, I absolutely believe that there's people that like married at 23 that can be together like but statistically speaking i, I your late 20s i know early one couple, 30s i know, is I know around one like, couple that married out of, out of uh high school that stayed together and is really really happy uh, that's it so yeah, you're, you're, most, you're, yeah yeah dude that's what i say like when I, when I look at like just a couple years i'm 30 right i just turned 30 right nine years from when i was 21 yeah when i was 21 i was fucking everything that walked I was a ranger shooting people in the face and then getting out at 24. I was running around LA like a fucking asshole. Like, so like, even when you're like, I'm 24, I'm mature. Like, and, and I'm not talking shit about an age group, but sure. I, dude, I did not mature until like, and I'm not even saying I have everything figured out now. I, I honestly don't, but I'm starting to learn like what's most important in my life. And you have the ability to like 
make sacrifices like, you know what? I'm not going to go out to the bar, get wasted and have a hot girl hit on me. I'm going to stay home and like be res- like y- you, you learn what's most important because you've been through these scenarios in your life and you've you've dealt with consequences and the repercussions. We're right. like, I don't want that. You, you don't you don't act on impulse. You act on like rationale and like what matters to you, like friendship, love and relationships. Absolutely. And, and like, you know, there is a, a, a thing inside where you don't want to be the 40 year old at the fucking club. You know, yeah, exactly. Yo, what's up, Tommy? I'm B, still dog. cool. Tommy B. I'm still cool, dude. Yeah. I'm still cool. My and flat back like, black rifle hat. Just like, oh, what up? 45. I'm out. Dude, <laughs> Google me. Not nine years ago. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. You we all have that. those friends who are doing that. And you're like, shit, man. I, exactly. <laughs> what, what is your life turned out to be? And how right. are you happy every day? Uh, <laughs> That's a rough path. <laughs> But again, like I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking gun toning hippie. I always say it's like you should do whatever you want makes you happy in life. But like, if you fall in these chambers of like action where you believe that that's what you want to do because you act out of impulse, sometimes you have to reel your own self back because people are like, "Why the fuck aren't you making me happy?" And you gotta be like, "Yo, bring it back." Yeah. Actually, I don't want that. I kind of want to do this, and I've had to do that myself multiple times in life, and that's kind of the position I'm in. Like, which is super hard to get out of a relationship where you like care about someone you value that person but you're like why are we arguing why are we what where is this conflict coming from and then you have to pull yourself back and be like oh fuck like i i i guess we just kind of don't get along and we could we could try to prove to each other every single day that right. we get along but you're right. like, we we don't and i don't want to say you suck because you don't you're awesome you're gonna make a fucking person insanely happy one day but sure i hope to it's make just someone not me it's just, I'm not yeah the person yeah and i hope someone makes so it is what it is you know and it's a hard thing it's a mature way to walk away but i hope that's the course so yeah and and, and so, so let me ask you this at, at 30 go ahead and into your 30s is there things you value more now in a relationship versus when you were 20 like <laughs> jesus yeah right right because it like I, priorities 20s, have changed yeah yeah where you're like oh man gotta be a fucking dime dude it's a it's gotta be a super mod yeah it's not giselle fu- i'm yeah. not fucking doing this <laughs> yeah. uh, you know and you're like and that's that's 20 well, dude, i think old. that the association with that is it's like when you walk into a fucking place right and this is funny and like i'll use the analogy i walk into this house right now with a girlfriend right let's just say and i'm 21 years old right when she leaves i'd be like hey you guys think she's hot right you see your fucking ass fucking hot right <laughs> 30 year old matt's like hey do you guys like her and and then 30 year old friends would go dude you smile and she makes you happy that's awesome so like I, that that's a maturity yeah, level right because it is. you know obviously you but want it's somebody- also it's also a conversation thing too where yeah. you can you can look you can have the hottest girl in the world uh, the, the old saying is show me the hottest girl in the world show a guy tired of fucking her it's tired of fucking her and it's true because there's only what? Look, you could fuck maybe two hours out of the but day. I'm gonna, every I'm gonna make day my, if you wanted but to. But I'm gonna make my own saying up. Show me a moderate girl in life, and I'll show you a guy that's not tired of fucking her. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because there's personality. There's like things that you like. It's so past the sexual aspect. And like, I'm a hyper hyper sexual person. Like, I will not. I look I, like I, go against that. Like I, I, insanely I, I saw person. you. I saw you fuck a door one time. Yeah, right I did. I put my I put my dick in between a mattress and a box spring. <laughs> I don't know why. No I said, lube. <laughs> no, no lube, lube either. No I, lube. Shit, I was never circumcised till I fucked a bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about me. <laughs> it's, <laughs> no, but it's it's different when you when you get into your thirties. I I will say this. Uh, you start leaning on more in personality too, where you're like, hey. All right, great. Uh, I can maybe fuck one, two hours out of the day tops. Right. The rest of the day, you've got to actually hang out and have a conversation right. with these people. And if they're not your best friend, it's a fucking long road in a relationship. Well, absolutely. And you look at things like, you know, you want to be supported, right, in your own endeavors. And like, at least in me in a relationship, I absolutely do. But then I also want to like support someone in their own endeavors where it's like, I want to like, as I consider myself an alpha and a very supportive guy. So it's like when, if I have a chick that I'm dating, she comes home like, Hey, this is what's going on. I want to make this move in my life. Can you like help facilitate, not even facilitate it, but like, will you be supportive? I'm like, fuck yeah. Cause I get enjoyment out of that. I'm like, yeah. man, I can, I can support you. Like do you do you? Cause I know that I'm doing me and I'm being a jackass with yeah. it. So it's, it's kind of a, that's what you, for me is what I need in a relationship where it's like you, there's a common ground of respect. Obviously there's a common ground of sexuality and there's a common ground of like, we are going to live our own lives, but at the end of the day, we're going to we're going to chill in the same bed and, and and support each other and be and you know that 
be better than the sum of her parts. What is that saying? I yeah, know, yeah. No, it, we're look, greater than the sum of her parts. Exactly. I read it on Instagram. Well, get, you can you can grab a copy of Eat, Pray, Love and figure <laughs> that out. But right. uh, no, it, it is funny though. Where, where where you enter your thirties and you start to look at the girl and you're like, do we like the same shit on Netflix? Because uh, that's that's a big deal. Right? You're like, holy shit, like. If she I want to like Stranger Things. Kim K is my favorite. I'm here. like, fuck, we're gonna. I'm gonna have to go play video games while you watch your show. Yeah, yeah. And there, there's nothing worse than that. Like they're watching the Real Housewives, <laughs> whatever the fuck it is, and you're like, shit, I want to go watch the game in the other room. Like there's got to be a. But see, that's the cool thing. Like you can find common ground where if you can watch the game on a laptop, she watches Kim K on the fucking TV and puts a hand <laughs> on your leg, maybe rubs the tip. I'm in, I'm in on that relationship. You're fine on that. Yeah, yeah. you're fine on that. You know, Plus maybe throw you, some whiskey in there and some anal sex, and we'll call it a day. Absolutely. Plus, you get a glimpse of Kim K, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's a nice booty. You should right, you should squat some more, baby. I'm good to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go to that Zumba class tomorrow. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Hit that 6 a.m. class. It's totally or, or she's fun. like, you should do some curls tomorrow. I'm like, oh fuck, I've been slacking. Yeah. Shit. Slacking at the gymnasium. <laughs> slacking at the gymnasium. You know. Yeah, no. So, so, so let me ask you this, because uh, your online persona is crazy. Uh, women love you. I mean, I've been out with you. Jesus Christ. Uh, there's, there, women throw themselves at you all day long. Does Matt Best want to get married and have a family one day? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. You can't yeah. see it, folks, but his, his cheeks just turned red. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, I, I absolutely 100% want a long-term relationship. And it's funny because I feel like even saying that statement, people are going to hate on that, but I don't give a fuck. Uh, my, my, yeah, my online persona is drastically different than, than actually how I am. And, and, I, and I want it. And, uh, you know, we'll probably hopefully have a <laughs> ability to pursue that. Uh, as far as a family, I don't know. I don't know if I want kids. I've actually been pretty anti-kids. But you're great. With, here's the thing. You're great with kids. I love kids. I see you with Jerry's kids all the time. They love you. You're great with kids. To me, it makes perfect sense that you're, you would be a great father. And, and uh, if well, there was anybody out there who should be a father, it, it would be you. <laughs> Versus well, the other dipshits who are running around with, with six kids at fucking Walmart that I right. went to. Right, yeah. And that, well, that's my main concern because, like, as a rational adult, I want to be, I, I know I would be an awesome father, but, like, I just know that if I have a kid now, it ruins a lot of personal dreams because I'd sacrifice for that child. So, like, in, in uh, four absolutely. or five years, I'm down, like, and that's a problem dating women in my age group. Yeah, because, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, absolutely. We're both 30, let's throw a baby in there. And I'm yeah. like, my mom had me when I was, she was 36. Right. So, I'm like, Let's push it to the right a little bit, and then, and I, and then I'll, I'll. I think that's I'll, I'll, the we'll appropriate see. age. Yeah, I think that's the appropriate age. Right, because then you have everything out of your system. Hopefully, financially, you've set yourself up right. in a nice way. Then you can enjoy it, and you're not having to stress about shit. Right. But right now, like, look, you're involved in like nine businesses. Uh, you know, it, it takes a lot out of you. People demand a lot out of out, out of Matt uh, everywhere we go. Like Ross, you know, right now. Exactly, and it's it's uh, it's one of those things where it's like you know I, I've got a child at home. Love the kid more than life itself. By the way, one of the cutest kids ever. Bless you. I mean, it's true. He hit the Gene jackpot. Seriously, on that. Yeah. gorgeous kid. He, he, hit the, he hit the Gene jackpot. But I, I felt, and because I think we're very similar in real life, I, I felt at a, at, a, at a place in my life where I was, I would say, all right, great, everything's okay uh, financially. Uh, we can have a child. Uh, I'm not going to miss out on life. I'm not going to miss out on on you know everyday stuff. And this is a good time for it. Uh, and I think you'll hit that time eventually. We'll see. Yeah. I, I think we'll, you will. We'll see. We'll I see. I think you will. You're great with kids. I, well, I appreciate it. But I like Uncle Matt's a dope thing because I can go spoil the kids, bring them treats. And then when they shit themselves, leave. I'm like, here's your kid back. And then leave. Uh, pat you on the head. I'll talk to you when you're not crying. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so what are you looking for in a girl these days? What, what is your most important quality? Oh, shit. That's a hard one. Yeah, you, I, you would probably say looks in your 20s, right? Yeah, I mean, I obviously want to be sexually attracted to somebody, but I think like my approach to physicalities is drastically different in my 30s than it was in my early 20s. You know, like right. big tit, tit, like as much as you can push out. Like, I love tits. So yeah. I, 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 sh- I shouldn't e- shouldn't even said that. I bought a lot of tits. <laughs> <laughs> it's been one, two, three, four, five, six. No. You bought six set of tits? Not sets. So just, 12 tits? No, six, six tits. All right, six I tits. I just want to make it sound better. No, but it's, look. Six tits is a lot of tits. Maybe one ass. I don't know. I don't, who knows? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Like going forward in a relationship. I, yeah, personality, man. I, want, I just, I like chill. I think life takes you in so many directions, especially now with the businesses and like yeah. uh, the public stuff we have to do. I like to check out. I'm like a gregarious introvert where I'm like, 
oh, I love to be this and this and this, but then I'm gonna I want to check out and someone to like Matt for Matt, not not hey can you tag me on instagram yeah and i'm not associating that with any of my relationships but i just don't want that going forward and, and exactly because yeah. it, it's it's too much well, uh, it's a resemblance of the, the character it's like you're in it for the vanity instead of like hey let's make a an adult relationship and, and it, it, exactly. support each other because let, let's face it an instagram relationship is not going to work like no you know, uh no. yeah it, it's got to be somebody who's at no. home who can take care of you make sure everything's you know yeah, and you can take care of them, but it's not vanity based. Exactly, that's the biggest thing. Exactly. Check out my tits, dog. Yeah, I'll be check your Check out that fake ass, dog. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> that's too. Yeah. No, it's not. We're not being I, mean. Look, we're not being mean. I, no, we're not being mean at all. Because there's a lot of that is, that's, dude. That's there's a, a lot. Right Everybody's yeah. getting the fake asses. Uh, that is the thing. There is the yeah. There's the I, ones. Iggy that can, Azalea is the one who I was. Is I, Iggy fake? Uh, oh yeah. So so three days ago they posted something uh, with her and her fake ass in a in a bikini sitting on a thing and it was like. Whoa, she looks different because uh, she's white. And but she's always had a giant ass. I know. And I, and I think over the year, because it's, you know, injections, I think over the years she's just increased it. Oh, um, injections. But that's the thing. Like, there's a lot of, when you do, like, research on Instagram, like, a lot of those girls that go to, like, hanging out in Saudi Arabia, like, yeah, they played for, like, I know, a I know. lot of plastic. Ah. Yeah. If your girlfriend is taking a trip to Saudi Arabia, guys, she's probably fuck. If she has an Instagram follow you, she's cheating on you. Uh, exactly. Yeah, or, those or motherfuckers she's are dirty over there. Financed by a prince. Yeah, some some form of prince. Yeah, over some, there. Yeah, prince. Like come come drink fucking two dollar tea out of my hundred thousand dollar gold cup. It's weird. It's a I, weird that's culture. A weird world, by the way. No, I know. I know. I, uh, they shit on the floor and then and then drive fucking seven hundred thousand dollar cars. It's crazy. It's a weird. It's weird absolutely vibe. crazy. I mean, do you? But I'm I'm not going to do that environment. Ain't about that life. I'll go. I'll I'll go this far. My first movie uh, that I wrote and produced out of my own company. A movie called Seven Ten Split. Big fan of the scripts. Uh, I four four and a half years worth of meetings. Uh, I documented it. Took one hundred forty two meetings. Uh, an investor finally said, "If you can get." Uh, one of these 10 actresses will finance this movie. I happen to know one of those 10 actresses. We got the movie financed. Uh, oh, shit. But it was, it was an Arabian prince who put in a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and he, he would show up on set in a, uh, like a rented Ferrari, take pictures with the, the actresses, literally for 20 minutes during lunch, and then leave. That was it. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even know. Well, it's, to it's, this day, I don't even know their, like, that guy's fucking name. What is their story over there? Well, the Saudi Arabia culture, I think, like they, they, they're westernized, but still very conservative Islam. So, but they all want to, it's like almost like how India is like pop culture America. Everybody wants to hate in pop culture America, but like what Bin Laden is not going to turn down a fucking selfie with Jennifer Lawrence. Right. He's just not going to no, do it. No, he's not going to do that. They'd be like, oh, let's blow up the fucking the buildings, but check out home. Anyway. It's Jennifer Lawrence. You see the Hunger, Hunger Games? I love that. I, fucking I love movie. the Hunger Games. So, I mean, that's the hypocr hypocrisy of the world, you know, and, and when the more and more you start to see that, you're just like, God dang, man, you guys suck. It's crazy, right? <laughs> it's a dude. It's insane. It's absolutely That's why crazy. I'm a gun telling hippie, man. I fucking, I, know. I drink whiskey and chill. I know. I was watching a, a house documentary the other night uh, on house music on uh, Showtime. It's about Swedish house mafia and they played in fucking India. And yep. which I didn't think that was allowed. Bollywood. Yeah. I didn't think that was allowed. And uh, not only was it allowed. These kids were going bug fuck, and it was like a hundred thousand of them. Uh, you know, raves and, and house music and all that shit is associated with ecstasy, obviously. Right, Molly. Who's Molly? Pure MDMA. Booch, booch. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And like the, the kids' reaction afterward was so crazy. I was like, fuck, I didn't know that went on there. Yeah, it's a crazy. Like even Bollywood's grown, and like as you as a film producer, you know that they purchase like a, like overseas. I, I, I sold a movie to them. Yeah, so I, Fifty K and a Call Girl. By the Go, way, yeah, they're redoing it. Yes, they're 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 remaking it in a, as a Bollywood remake. Um, that's how I, I met my wife. Uh, you can pick that movie up on Amazon and all that shit now. But uh, they they're they finished shooting. They're in post production. It comes out next year. Uh, they're flying us out to the Indian premiere of it. Oh, you get to go to the premiere? I do, yeah. I am fucking jealous. And then I helped with the script as well. Uh, and the crazy thing is, is, is uh, the dance numbers. So they they, had oh, they're doing dancing to this? Eight. Oh, there my was God, eights yes. In the, in the script, the last script that I saw, there was eight dancing numbers. Uh, for those of you out there who haven't seen the film, it's about a guy dying of cancer. I now will say this. Gonna, gonna can, 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 can I take this away from you real quick? 50K yeah. and a Call Girl is something that Ross directed and acted in it. 
Ross, if you watch any of his film, he's like the over top, hilarious motherfucker. But 50 Can a Call Girl is a serious film. It, it's almost like a mockumentary, but it's, it's shot as a documentary. It's fucking it's, it's shot as a documentary, it's but uh, fucking beautiful. Thank you. Very when much. I watched that I, film, I, 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 I literally, literally cried twice in it. Not to make it fucking sound stupid, like legit. I was like, how the fuck did you, the way you shot that, I was like, all right. So I don't know how they're going to make a dance number out of it. It's like, I, yeah. And, and that's the thing. Was we, we wanted to shoot it real. Uh, I, I hired one of the guys from um, Intervention on A&E to help out with it. So it seemed more real. All the pills, everything you saw in the movie and everything we did uh, was real. Um, and uh, so, so we wanted to make it seem like a real movie. It turned out great. Uh, critically, it was fantastic. But uh, the, the, the fact that somebody watched that in India and was like, I'm going to recreate this. Yeah. That's so dope. Uh, uh, so, and it was crazy. But it's, it's, a, it's a guy dying of cancer. And I don't know how they're going to put eight dan- dance dancers numbers like when in you get there. when you get terminal cancer to dance around like uh, or they're gonna, what are they going to dance around him? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. What yeah. the fuck? Where, where do you go? From <laughs> where there? do you go from there? Where do you go from there? But but, uh, but you know to tie it back to relationships, the, the movie's about a relationship. And so when I asked the the Bollywood producers, I was like, "Why which, this movie? Why which, did you Why did you like it?" And which they were is like, a fun fact. You met your wife on the set of that movie. On the set of this movie, it's fucking glorious. On the set of this movie, and uh, the, the it turns out the producers in India who bought the movie knew that story. Uh, they also said a lot of kids in India uh, are are you know heading to that that world of you know more realistic shit and and whatever. Uh, and it's more relationships are, are more out in the open. I guess they're not there. Right. Um, yeah. Instead of being like, you get married by like, yeah. 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 So they, they, they said absolutely it would be plausible for, for a guy to fall in love with a prostitute and, and have this and boom journey together. I want to watch like, a movie yeah. again, just based off a guy that falls I know, in love with a prostitute. But this will lead me to my next question. Yeah. Could you date, could you, could you marry a prostitute? No. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I may or may not it's have crazy, had slept right? with some in my day, but no, no, nah, fuck no. But well, we, all, we all have those friends who date strippers now or, right. or porn stars, and you're like, hey, bro, what the, what the fuck? Like, but it's hard because it's like, you know, if you look at the life that I've lived, I lived a pretty crazy young, younger life. So a chick that was a stripper, can you really fault a dude for dating her? It's like your active practices are most important in my life. Like we're right. okay, this is what you're doing and time me out, but like your historical data and, and your life experience obviously contributes to what you're gonna do in the future. But But you always have those friends yeah. though who, like, who I'm dating this hooker, man. I'm like, I know. I, I, I dude, know. I can't. She gets plowed out. Oh, that's just sex, though. I'm like, oh man, I am so jealous. I, I could know. never. I what, could what, never. What, what is Jared tell? Is it bored out? Bored out. Oh, bored out in the back fucking car of a Prius. I yeah, mean. and it's it's. Uh, look, we've all got as a guy, we've all got that one buddy who has dated, dated a stripper, married a stripper, uh, some yeah. form of prostitute, and they think they can change them. Of like, right. oh, no, 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 they're different now, and it always ends up terribly. Unless, unless it's like she was a stripper when she was like 23 to 27 and you're marrying her at 35, there might be some character change. And like, you think potentially, but if it's like she quit stripping to marry me, uh, bro, no, run, run. There's yeah. a fucking fire. There's a yeah, fire. It, run. It, it, I, I will say this. Uh, if you're going to judge a stripper on whether to marry it or not, judge it by the handshake. If it's a real firm handshake, she's she's been grabbing that pole way too long. <laughs> grabbing that pole way, That's way too hard. That's funny. Way too long. And uh, but then again, like I don't want to be judgmental because there's there are people out there that could fucking date a stripper and love it. Like yeah. So I don't I don't know. I, I, I'm absolutely. saying as me as a me yeah. as my and same as as, yeah. as as Ross. I'm saying the same thing. Yeah. Couldn't marry a stripper or prostitute. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, prostitute's way worse in my opinion. I know, but you well, got hey, paid but for we sex. Met somebody who. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah, we met a guy who who said, "Hey, I'm married." To my my yeah, my wife used to be a prostitute. And I was like, "Wait, what?" Because uh, I feel like if you're a prostitute, that's a solid 500 guys at least. If, oh, easy, if, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got herpes. Condom, tri- condoms don't stop digits. herpes all the time. Yeah, uh, <sighs> I, maybe quadruple. I mean, because look, if you're working once a night, there's 365 days in a year. That's a lot of days. You can run up on, on quadruple digits real quick. I don't think do you work once a night. I'd, I'd imagine like twice a night, right? I, I don't know how that works. Well, I guess I, we're, yeah. are you like a Craigslist hooker or are you like a yeah. high class escort in Vegas where you like but even someone then, for a week? Money's money, so money's they're probably money, going yeah. where the money's going. So if it's True. two, three times a day, Oof, that's a, whatever yeah. you know it's it that's gets, what i had to deal with the waters I, get murky and brown and bloody you know oh god <laughs> with the, the older i got 
when I started thinking about sexual partners, because everybody judges like, how many people you have slept with? When you start to be like, oh, five, six is a lot. Then you start to add years together where you're like, I'm 30. So if you started having sex, let's say 16, is that the average? Yeah. 14 people, that's one a year. That is nobody. Yeah, so yeah, like when yeah. a girl my age is like, I've slept with 14 people. And like, I used to be like, yeah, that's a lot. I start to think, I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck. That's, one, that's a year. one a year. Yeah. If you fucked three a year, you're looking at 30s. Who wants to put that number out? Like, yeah. And it ain't even that bad. That's, that's, that's one relationship every bi quarterly. Like, that ain't bad. Sure. Not even sure. bi quarterly. That's like bi yearly. Sure. Yeah. No, annually, I believe. They I meant that bi yearly. There's probably a girl in there for them, too. Oh, there's know? always one girl in there. Always one. Well, yeah, there's always one. There's always one girl in there. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets tough. Uh, I, I accidentally dated a stripper once. Did you really? I did. I did. This was a this was a fun story. Uh, I would love to hear this. Uh, met her in Vegas. Um, shocking. Yeah, yeah. Real, real shocking. I was th- I was thinking Phoenix, Arizona. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fresno. I was Fresno, California. Palm Springs. It was a it was uh, a sun yeah, yeah. sun getaway. Exactly. By the way, if you date anybody from a resort town, uh, never right ends away, up. Uh, never us. ends up well. As everybody who's vacationed into that city comes down and have sex with them, and it's. Yep. Yeah, you're on 90 by the time they get to you. Yep. They're still thinking about Jim from that vacation back in 86. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, but I accidentally, so I, I accidentally dated a stripper once, and that's real. Um, I met her in Vegas, uh, met her at a club, like a, like a high-end club, where I was like, all right, cool. And uh, I was like, what, what do you do for a living? She was like, oh, you know, uh, I, I'm a serious, serious dancer. Like, I was a dance major in college and whatever, and I was like, oh. Stripper. Thought, I thought it was a legit I know, I know. thing. Thought it was a legitimate dance. thing. Very smart, very cool. And I was like, awesome. I was like, where do you live? She's like, oh, I live in Los Angeles. So I was like, okay. But she doesn't live in Vegas, so she's like, not a Vegas stripper. You right. Because that's, a, that's yeah. a fairly obvious thing. And, and uh, uh, so we, we ended up dating a couple months, three months or whatever. And she was like, when are you, when are you guys coming out you know, to Vegas again? And I was like, ah, going there for New Year's. You know? Going there for New Year's. Oh, no. Three years later. It was Did like, you get a special? I mean, three, three months later. Yeah. Three months later. So uh, me and my friends go back out there for New Year's Eve uh, from college, and they were like, oh, hey, is your, you know, the, the girl you're dating going to meet up with us? I was like, yeah, you know? I was like, she's actually, she's working tonight. She's like, she's in a show. And I, I, I figured it was like a burlesque show. Right. Uh, like she was, She's you know, a dancer. She's out there tap dancing to the fucking Irish songs. Yeah, you know? I thought she was a plan in Hollywood, like in a show, maybe, you know, a backup dancer for Penn and Teller. Or Chris Angel, I don't, I don't know. You know the amazing Jonathan. Um, so I, I, I'm totally naive because she doesn't seem like the stripper type at all. And uh, uh, so, so, anyways, we get there to Vegas. We check into our hotel, and I was like, "Hey, babe, you want to meet us for dinner?" You know? She, no, no, I gotta, I gotta work. She was like, well, "Why don't you bring your friends over after work?" Like, you know? I'll, Did she I'll, tell I'll you the them? establishment? Was it like the catwalk? And you're like, "Oh, what the fuck?" She, so uh, anyway. I, I asked her, I was like, great, wh- where at? You know, she was like, I'll leave your name at the door or whatever. And it was, it was a brand new place. It was called like Ice or, you know, uh, Ice Palace or something like that. Did you know walking up to this establishment, you're like, oh, fuck. Well, so here's the thing. I, I get all of my friends. Here's what's embarrassing about it. Okay. I get all my friends. We get, we rent Come meet my awesome girlfriend. Yeah, come meet my awesome girlfriend. Oh, she's rad. We, we get in a limo. We're going there or whatever. And, and it's a, it turns out it was a brand new strip club that had just opened. Nobody knew it. Uh, even the limo driver's like, man, I don't know where this place is. You, you want to give me the address? Yeah. Like, Absolutely. We show up and it's a, it's a two, four place, beautiful outside, brand new. And I was just like, oh shit. Uh, are we going to watch some tigers jump through some yeah. fire hoops? I, that's here? exactly what I thought. I was like, man, I, this is going to be a big show because it's, it's a two floor place. I never see places that big. Right. It was massive. And it certainly didn't look like a strip club from right. the outside. And I was like, <laughs> fucking awesome. It was a red carpet outside, you know? I was like, great. Shit. <laughs> we're VIP. Yeah. Am I in the VIP exactly. list? Exactly. Maybe we're, we're late for the play, yeah. you know? Or wh- whatever the fucking thing is going to be. Walk inside, and they're like, hey, there's a, there's a cover. And I was like, no, my girlfriend works here. She put us on the list. You know, we're good to go. And he's yeah. like, oh. It's like, I'm, I'm the boyfriend. Yeah, and he goes, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, we have a, we have a list. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you, you and plus seven of your friends? And he was like, yeah, go on in. Oh. I was like, oh, fa- fantastic. Is there, do we have seat numbers? Do you have tickets for us? You know, how does this work? And he was like, no, no, you, you can pretty much just sit as close as you want to, to the stage. And I was like, oh, oh shit. Fuck. All right. Cool. Like, it's a, it's a new progressive play. I'd seen a few of those at NYU. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. You open up the front door, you know, to, <laughs> yeah. Well, I take you to the candy shop. Yeah. And you're Welcome like, to the candy shop. Oh, fuck. 
So, anyways, <laughs> give it up for Lexus in the back of the corner, bro. Ross's yeah. girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly Fuck. what it turned into. So. They take us to the, the I, don't, I don't want to say a bouncer or the, the fucking door, or whatever it is. Uh, the, the waitress takes us to a private table. We sit down. Uh, obviously, I, we're in a fucking strip club at this point. I'm just like, oh, fuck. What's going to happen now? And then she comes out. Yeah. Hi, Ross. Buck naked. Oh, but no. dancing. And she's like, hey, I got to keep dancing. My boss is over here or whatever. But like super like, normal was like, hey, I got to keep dancing. Hey, guys, nice to meet you. Yeah, but yeah. I'm going to be all, oh, she, fuck. And she That's had even known a worse. couple of my friends from like public settings. So like she was like, oh, hey, what's up? So and so and so. I was just like, oh, my God. So like then my other buddies were like, hey, I feel like should we feel bad? Because we're watching, you know, this girl you're dating is, is a fucking stripper now nude. Like, what do we do? And I was just like, uh, I'd kill the baby, you know, yeah. on New Year's yeah. Eve. It was. uh. That was a rough one. That that's a hard, yeah, because she was like still cool about it. It wasn't even really like, cool. Hi, I'm Kylie. It yeah, was just like, hey, hey, babe, I gotta go dance a little more. But after, let's go get coffee and hang out. You're totally like, totally normal. I really want to like you. Yeah. But fuck, that's hard for totally me to get over. Totally normal girl. Yeah. I, I that's just, a hard one, dude. It was a weird one. Weird one for me, and like never had any of the stripper hang ups of like, oh, I've got kids to support or. I'm making my way through med school. I'm going to be a nurse. Or making my way downtown. Yeah. 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 One of those things. Yeah. yeah. None of those hang ups. So that, that's why it was strange. I can see that. Yeah. I, especially get thrown in that setting. Like, I'm, I was not expecting this. And that, that's what happens when you're younger. You know, you learn. Exactly. You, you live and learn. And I you live was, and learn. I want to say 24, 25 at that time. So like, you know, oh, you were still you know, young. Now, yeah, because yeah, now, dude, whenever the first word out of a girl's mouth is "I'm a dancer," the first words, you know, "I'm a dancer," you're like, oh, okay, you're a stripper. Uh, yeah, you're no stripper. grown up woman is a dancer. Right. Like, unless you're on Dancing with the Stars, it's, I'm a dancer. Like, oh shit, where what strip club? No, Circus Soleil. You're like, no. Yeah. Why would you start with dancer then? You should say I work at fucking Circus Soleil. Exactly, exactly. You don't say. Is, I'm is that a like dancer. a dancing? I don't know. I just threw a Vegas term out. I don't no, really know. it's it's. I, but, but I will say this in L. A. There's so many music videos that it's like a right. lot of girls will say they're dancers, but it, you know, True. They're, they're essentially extras in a music video. Well, there's some dope dancers out there. The new, like that Biebs video that came out. Is it too late now to say sorry? sorry. They yeah. were crushing that. Those yeah. are dancers. You know? No, look, there's some great Maybe dancers The T-Pain ba- dancers. But no, I don't think so. They all strip eventually. But they all, <laughs> the money's not coming in. I'm taking my clothes yeah, off. Yeah, because to, to be a dancer in a music video pays about $125 a day. A day. Yeah. So for two all days of shooting. Yeah. Exactly. I'm they're throwing quarters up eventually. in this motherfucker. No, I'm <laughs> I tell you what, you better dance for me, baby, before I throw a damn filet mignon at that stupid fucking face. Yeah, do you, do you want to fill it at your goddamn face? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, God. it's good. This is a good episode. I like it. It was a great episode. Yeah, we're, 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 we're making it there, you know? Yeah, we're, look, we're making it's our way It was bonding time. It was bonding time. It was bonding time. I whispered I'm it. My way down. It's creepy. Why are you whispering? I'm making my way down. Because it's it's we're we're two we're two grown ups sitting, sitting together in a, in a bedroom <laughs> talking about relationships, talking about love, yeah, talking we're about venting, life. You know, getting yeah. it out there. Yeah. Uh, by, by the way, uh, quick fun fact: uh, we are going to have the girl on the show who Jared lost her virginity to. Uh, oh my god! Uh, really? She called in, said she would do an interview on the show. Holy shit! So in the next few weeks, uh, that will be set up and get ready for That's that. Funny. Yeah. That, yeah, that's gonna. Oh, do you I, do you talk to the girl? By the way, do you talk to the girl you lost your virginity to? Um, yeah, a while after her and I, she actually we had a horrible, horrible breakup, like in high, in high school. God, I'm always saying everybody goes crazy, but then we, she got her shit together, and like a year later, we met up and like back to the person that I really like. So we we became friends for like the next five or six years. We it's great. We talked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alexis Breen is her name, and uh, wow, I haven't I haven't talked to her in years, but yeah, she she was she's. She, Good girl, man. I hope she's well. She's married to some Brazilian guy, I think. So hopefully they're still together and living a good life. Wow, look at that. Yeah, you know, jiu-jitsu and butt stuff. I know. Is that the Brazilians? Are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> jiu-jitsu and butt stuff, that right? Is Brazil, though. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's jiu-jitsu, butt stuff, uh, and then carnival. And, and some, like, meat. They have, like, the, they do the sliced meat. meats. Oh, it's boy. not good out there. Boy. It's not a euphemism for cock. You're just it's, talking about it's sliced not, meat. But it should be. It should be. It should be. You know? Uh, God, that what's that meat place in Vegas where they just bring it out on a stick it's to like you? The, yeah, not the Mongolian barbecue. Sabas or, or sab- yeah, we're the, they, we're the worst with names of shit. We're them. horrible. They just yeah. bring out that giant platter of meat and they slice it out. Yeah, and just like want more red meat. Like, yeah. I got, yeah, I got, I got the meat sweats there one night so bad. So good, I dude, I I didn't sleep the whole night, and I was at the Bellagio, 
Uh, I was <laughs> staying tucked in a nice little if, bed. If, yeah, and, and this isn't like a you know a money thing at all. But if if you stayed at the Bellagio, there's they've got special beds there. You can actually order them after you no stay shit. there. Yes, they're they're incredible. And if you can't sleep in a Bellagio bed, you can't sleep in shit. You can't sleep anywhere. And, no, and so uh, dude, the meat sweats. I, I didn't. I, I you didn't I, sleep on the Bellagio no. bed. No, you know what? This is a weird story. We're going off on a tangent about it, but uh, I. I I, I I ate way too much of this place, like sabas or sambas, I think it was called. Uh, it was all meat, all Brazilian and everything. So um, I ended up watching all of Breaking Bad, uh, like, oh, a, like an entire season of Breaking Bad on A and E on, on a marathon. So it was running through the night, and I was like, I I'd never seen it. And it was like season three, and I was like, oh fuck, this is the greatest goddamn show ever. Long and short of it is, if I don't get meat sweats. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never seen, I, I, you never watched Breaking Bad? No. You know? Never. You know? I would, I would never understand the magic of Breaking Bad. I, if I get beat sweats, I'll probably finish season two of Narcos because I have not watched it yet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch season one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I knew that was going to throw you for a loop. Yeah. I, season one was awesome. I watched the first I was episode like, of Narcos. You're just going to watch season two and not season no, one? No, season one was dope. I just haven't seen the season two yet. So. Okay. I haven't either, by the way. But yeah, we're, we're getting there. So I guess we got the drink bro of the week. We do. We do have the drinker bro of the week. I just say I'm, I never get to do it. You don't. I never. Go ahead. I'm not even to choose someone out. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this since this was a relationship ish or uh, relationship ish, episode. Is it issue episode. I didn't even know what Both. I was saying there. But no, hey, episode. Look, all the issues were talked about in the episode. It's a good one. There you go. Way to, way to articulate, yeah. it, Ross. No, I, if you guys are going through anything, just I hope you know that find happiness and whatever that is. I think you got to figure your own shit out individually and personally, and then once that's there, then you can have someone supplement it. So just live a good life, man. I'm. I, I've got we got a lot of shit in the plate uh, getting sued by two people right now going through a relationship <laughs> breakup i'm still a happy motherfucker <laughs> so if i'm happy all the way up you know <laughs> just live your life and, and have a good one man i swear that's the way i look at it yeah and, and my uh my drinking bro et of the week is uh look the the special girl who was a stripper i dated back in the day i talked about on the episode tonight <laughs> i want you to know this you're a great person <laughs> yeah and it had nothing to do i hope you're not stripping now with you as the person. <laughs> <It's a> person. <laughs> all right bro i'm gonna i'm gonna close it out because this is awesome no but it had nothing to do with the person <laughs> she was just a stripper so for ross patterson the, the big dick daddy i am matt best thank you for listening to us friend I had a great time ross this is fucking awesome we are out of here thanks everybody we love you cheers good night drinking bros love you Woo! Woo!